All right, we're going to make an adaptive component in Revit that acts a little bit like these curved wooden pieces. Um, it'll have a width on it, and it'll have various heights that we can set. We'll have a material parameter on it, and we'll have a length option as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close this guy. And to go to Revit, and to do this, we're going to need a, a adaptive generic family. So I'm going to go to Family and New. I'm going to pick Generic Model Adaptive. Click Open. And I'm going to come down and in my graphic display options, I'm going to turn my background to white. Obviously, you don't have to do this, but it's a little easier on the eyes for me. And so the first thing we're going to do is create the length of this thing. So it'll be the overall length. So I'm going to go to my reference level floor plan. And I'm going to put down a couple of reference planes. So I'm going to go over here to Plane and put one plane on the left of the center reference plane and one plane on the right of the center reference plane. And then I'm going to uh, <clears throat> annotate these two reference planes so I can control their width. And that's going to control the, I'm sorry, so it control the distance um, apart from this center. And that's going to control the length. So if I come into Create and Aligned, I'm going to left click on this, left click on the middle, left click on the right one, and then left click on nothing. And there's a little equality piece that'll come up and I'm going to click on that. So it'll mean these two lines will grow equally about this center. Then I'm going to come and pick this line and this line and that's an overall length dimension. Okay, so that's the overall length. So I'm going to go to modify to stop that, pick one of these, and if I move that you'll see that, that it moves, it remains equal around that center point. So that means that whenever we change the length, it'll grow from the center. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is put a reference line in that we're going to glue all this stuff to that reacts to this distance. So if I go to reference and line, and I have my level set to reference level and it's set to draw and work plane and 3D snapping is not on, I can come to this intersection and come to this intersection, right? And then when I go to modify to stop that command and if I pull this you'll see that that line grows with the width right so now that line is sort of being controlled by this now we're going to put a parameter on this length so I'm going to come in here and pick this and up here in the label dimension is a create new parameter I'm going to click on that and we're going to make this an instance parameter and we're going to call it length Whoops. I can spell. Oh my goodness. Length. Um, and then I'll click OK. All right. And so if I go to my 3D view, right, very exciting. We have a line that's controlled by this parameter. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a series of points that are hosted to this line, put some <clears throat> profiles on it, and make a, um, make a, series of heights that control sort of the curved um, height of that thing. So if I come to my draw and put point element, if this is set to draw on face, it will host these point elements to whatever element we're hovering on. So I just want to host them to this line. So I'm just going to click on this line four times and they will host. If this is set to draw on work plane instead of draw on face, you see how the, the dot stays big? It's not hosting to that line, it's just on it. So for example, if I come in and pick that point, it will move off of that line. It's free of that line. But I want my points to be hosted to that line. So in order to get them to host, you need to make sure when you do the point that it's set to draw on face. Okay, so just make sure. Um, so now what I'm going to do is use these points as a series of planes to draw a profile on. So I'm going to go to Reference Rectangle. I'm going to set my work plane by clicking on the Set under Work Plane and clicking on the reference point. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle from that reference point off to the right. And then I'm going to go to Set again, set that as my current work plane, and draw to the right. Now when I use the Set, and I'm setting the work plane current, I want the draw to be on work plane because that means it will host to the plane of that point. So there are different 
settings when uh, you want things to host to different things. So let's go ahead and set this guy and click to there. All right, so now I've got four rectangles, right? So now what I want to do is I want to put <clears throat> dimensions on those so I can put parameters on them. So I'm going to come in and tab until I have one of the lines and left click on it and it's going to give me a listening dimension and I can make that permanent by clicking on the icon of the dimension. So then I can come in and pick this one and make that permanent and just kind of go down the line and get myself some permanent dimensions. Now I could go in and just dimension them using the create aligned tool but it's much easier just to come in and pick these guys and dimension them this way. I also find it's a little bit more, cons it'll work better, like sometimes you might pick the wrong thing when you're dimensioning using the other tool. Okay, so now we've got these guys. Now the width is always going to be the same, so I can, add, I can place the same parameter on that. So I'm going to go through and select the dimension and then hold down the control key and select these four dimensions. And I'm going to add a parameter to that and I'm going to call it W for width and I'm going to make it a type parameter. Okay, so now all those are the same size. And then I'm going to go through and put a separate parameter on each one of these. So if I click that one and go to parameter, I'll just name that one H1. And then I'll name this one H2. And I should be making these instance parameters. So I forgot to do that for the first one, but we'll go back and fix it. So I'm going to pick this one and make it H3. And I'll make this one H4. Okay. All right. So I forgot to make this one an instance parameter. So I can select it here and I can make it an instance parameter by checking that right here. So now that's an instance parameter. Okay. So now I can pick these guys, one, two, three, four, and I can create form. And now I've got a form. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do um, when I come back is we'll make a couple of types um, and then we'll insert it into a project.